All right, Rika fans. Uh, in this video, we're going to be fitting the Rika parts that we include with the CS1 Cafe Racer Kit. Here's a quick oversight visual of some of the parts that we're going to be installing in this video. Tank mount, the battery box, your uh, modified gas tank, your seat, your upholstery pan, your metal seat pan, the belt guard, the side panel covers, and the side panel mounts, the taillight bracket, the license plate bracket and light, two-part epoxy, here's the rubber stick-on uh, for the battery box, and some of the hardware. This is the hardware that's included, some of the Allen head bolts, the lock washers, lock nuts, the bolts, the rubber rivet nuts to mount the seat and the small bolts to mount the seat as well as some of the hardware you're going to reuse the risers from the coil the rubber tank mounts some uh, a couple of the original pieces of hardware such as the battery box bolts and the rear fender bolts here's the rectifier with its original bolts the starter solenoid you're going to replace the bolts and there's your coil and you're going to replace the bolt on that as well have on hand also some lock, uh, some uh, some Loctite. You're going to want to use that. First step is going to be mounting the new dropped tank bracket. Your original rubber mounts will mount onto our modified tank bracket. You slide those over the end, just like you would on the stock mount that you cut off. So this is going to be mounted in the original location that the coil was in below the uh, co original tank. So here's the risers that came with the original coil. As you can see, there's two screws. We're going to use the black side screws, um, and this coil will eventually mount uh, in a similar position. I'll show you later. So the first step is going to be to take these risers and bolts and mount our new dropped tank mount on. Now, as you can see in this video, I'm going to stick the screws through the back side and the risers will act as a nut on the front side. So we'll have a screwdriver on one side. We'll be tightening the uh, risers down on the opposite side to hold this in place. Um, and if you fit, if the fitment is just is right, it will be uh, the uh, mount, the tail mount, the tank mount will be just two inches below the original tank mount. Now, you, as you can see on this mount, the, uh, the holes are slotted for um, a little bit of movement up and down, and this is on purpose. This is so you can align your tank eventually up or down a few millimeters to make sure all your panels are aligned and sure, to ensure proper fitment. So as here, I'm tightening down the, uh, the risers with a wrench and the screws on the front side. And... Um, Take note that if this is not perfectly level, if you look at it front to back and the risers are not perfectly level, you can you can uh, tweak it one way or the other. Next step is to take these 10 millimeter bolts and your stock fender bolts, two of the stock fender bolts, and the two long 10 mil bolts that we include in the kit in order to mount the battery box. Now the battery box goes in from underneath, and the back sheet metal goes around the bottom, and the uh, the these two that I'm mounting right now go up front. So the the long 10 millimeter 10 millimeter bolts with lock washers mount in this location. So thread those all the way up, and on the back you're going to be tightening the back two bolts with two of the original fender bolts. So put those in position, tighten those up. This is going to be the um, to hold the battery box in place. Now the uh, once you tighten up the battery box, the um, next step we want to do is uh, put the uh, original tank bushings on top of these 10 millimeter bolts sticking up because we're going to mount. Um, the tank in place. So those you want to tighten those bolts so they stick up all the way. There's these two rubber bushings that come with the original tank. These right here. Uh, the ones with the little raised portion, those stick up. Those go in first. 
and then the other two will be held off till later. So as you can see in this close-up video, you see the new revised tank mount that drops the tank down a couple inches. There's the screws on the back side of it holding it in place, and there's the risers in the front holding it in place. All right, so now an important note is when you're trying to mount the tank to the uh, front here on the frame, you want to make sure when you mount the tank that if these rubber mounts are not perfectly centered left to right, top to bottom, you can tweak them. All the fr factory Suzuki frames are just a little bit off. So when you mount the tank, and if it's not quite going on here on the front of this, make sure you just manhandle the our tank mount because the frame mount, the original coil mount that we use as the new tank mount, on those frames are are welded different on every bike. So if your if your tank mount is cocked left to right or up and down, just bend it till it's perfectly level, and slide it up and down in those slots until the tank fits. All right, then you can mount these rubber washers on top of the. Uh, tank and sandwich it down as is in the original bike and another important note is to make sure that you know that don't mount your petcock until the tank is on the bike sometimes the tank won't fit over the t over the uh, frame with the petcock in place now these rubber mounts are going to be mounted in the battery boxes go ahead and take the uh, take the uh, adhesive off and stick these in the box So the long one goes here on the bottom of the box in between the bolt holes. Make sure you center it just right. And the shorter one's going to go on the inside front of the battery box. Make sure you center that right between the bolts because you're going to have quite a few bolts sticking through. We raise it up so that the battery doesn't interfere with any of the hardware coming through. So here's a shot of the inside of the battery box and the rubber that we have uh, stuck to it now. So the rubber piece on the front and the rubber piece on the bottom isolates the battery. All right. So next step, we're going to mount the um, side panel mounting hardware. So this, these are the metal brackets that hold the side covers in place. So they're triangle pieces. They uh, attach to the front side and the underside of the battery box. It's real important if you want to scuff these up with some 60, 80, or even 100 good sandpaper. Scuff these up nice, nice on the front side of them where you're going to glue the side panels to. Here's the hardware. These are called thumb screws. See how they're raised up and knurled? So you can take these on and off with your hands. This is important so that you can take your side panels off and on without tools. So here what we're going to do is put the thumb screws through the front of the side panel and through the bottom, and this holds it in place. And like I said earlier, sand the front of these side panels, scuff it up with some 80 grit or 100 grit before, you, we, before we glue the side panels on. That's going to be later in the video. But don't clean it with any cleaners or solvent. You want to make sure you just sand it and then wipe it off with a clean rag before you glue. And we'll go over this later, but I just want to give a heads up. So here's where we're going to be tightening down the thumb screws. Get the side panel mount in place. And, uh, you know, b pull, it, pull the side panel out in its slot. You'll see that they're slotted. They're slotted on purpose so that they can go in and out on the battery box. Here's a close-up shot of the two side panel mounts in place. See the thumb screws are holding them in position. There's two thumb screws on the bottom as well. Those hold the, the slotted position. All right, so uh, here's a shot next. We're going to go ahead and put the uh, belt guard on. And this is a bolt, the original bolt from the bottom inside of the battery box. This comes off your bike. And here's the belt guard we include. So the new revised belt guard goes on right here, basically in this position. Um, the front bolt that, that you keep from the original battery box goes there on that tab where my finger is. And then this hole will mount the back bolt, the back bolt that we include. There's an Allen head bolt that goes in the back one there. This is this one, this Allen head bolt, it's a three eighths Allen head cap screw, stainless steel with a lock washer. We're gonna have to open up that hole a little bit to three eighths. So you're gonna have to drill this hole out. See how it's uh, it's oval? It's not a perfect circle. You're gonna want to drill that out to three eighths. That's what I'm doing here, so that your uh, three eighths Allen head bolt can come through. Now you're going to mount your belt guard in place. 
put the fact one of the factory uh, battery box bolts on the front of the belt guard, and then the um, Allen stainless Allen head bolt in the back of the belt guard. Taking care, if you notice, the front slot is slotted on purpose once again so that you can make sure that the belt doesn't rub against the inside of the belt guard. Here's a picture of the close-up. There's the belt guard, the back bolt in place, and then the Allen head bolt holding the rear of it on. All right, with a lock washer there. All right, next we have the seat uh, seat pan. This is the metal front section of the seat pan and the rubber block we include to isolate your seat. This reduces vibration. So here there's two holes you'll notice drilled. Those holes are going to go over the welded uh, the weld nuts that are inside of this piece. So this is the rear mount of the seat pan. You're going to stick that in there. It might be a little tight. You're going to have to sandwich that rubber inside of the seat pan. Push it down till it's flat, and you'll see inside there's two lock nuts. See those nuts inside of there? Those are make sure those are nice and centered. Make sure this rubber block is centered so that your seat pan can fit with the lock with the nuts right inside those two circles. So now you here's the bottom and here's the top of the seat pan assembly, and this is where you're going to tighten it down. You want to make sure that gap gets stays nice and straight and, and doesn't touch. The two metal pieces shouldn't touch together. So here we're going to include two Allen head cap screws with two flat washers. Make sure you put some Loctite on these, and you're going to tighten these down, and that's going to sandwich the two pieces together so that it's isolated by the rubber. It's going to help isolate the ride so your seat doesn't vibrate as much. So put some lock, uh, Loctite on those threads. It's real important so they don't vibrate loose over time. Tighten those up with an Allen wrench. And now this seat assembly can be uh, placed on the frame. For rough fitment. So there's the Allen head bolts. And as you see earlier, see I didn't over tighten them. Make sure there's the gap there is there's some rubber. You don't want to tighten those, over tighten those where the metal touches the metal. And those bolts should never come back, come flush with the, uh, come past flush. So these two rear tabs with the nuts welded to them is going to be on the rear of the bike. And these two Allen head screws I've chosen to use on the rear of the seat mount. Um, they're not included with the kit because you can use the stock uh, rear bolts. These are the stock two bolts that come with, that mount your original seat to the bike. So you can use your original hardware um, or you can use some 10 mil, 10 mil uh, stainless Allen head cap screws. So stick the front of the seat pan through the two front 10 millimeter bolts that sandwich between the rubber. You remember the ones that held the tank on? Those stick up front and you'll notice they're slotted. And here I'm tightening down the rear with the original seat pan bolts that come with the original motorcycle. So recapping the front slides over the two 10 millimeter bolts that went through the frame and the battery box and through the gas tank. And then the rear here gets tightened down with uh, a wrench. So here's lock nuts that we're gonna go ahead and put in between the two levels of sheet metal where the two bolts stick through the frame and the battery box, we're going to tighten those lock nuts down in there. It's kind of tricky to get them on, but once you get them on, they're easy to tighten down. Slide them in between the two layers on the seat pan and tighten those down with your fingers. And then tighten them down with a 10 mil wrench. 10 mil, maybe 12 mil. So here I'm tightening them down with a, with a uh, open end of a combo wrench. Sandwich that seat pan down till it's flush with the frame, till the metal section on the bottom sits flat against the frame. Here's the rear tightened down on the rear stock bolts that are tightened down the seat pan. And then the front, you notice this metal section here is tightened down completely all the way down to the frame.